Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the OCRP iRacing League Series at Bristol. Under the lights tonight, Joe, what can we expect besides some beating and banging? Uh, beating and banging in a whole lot of insanity. 200 laps at the last true Coliseum in the world. Tonight is going to be all about clamoring, beating, banging, doing whatever you have to do to get up front and get that win. And considering the league is coming to, coming to a close, it's uh, now more than ever, these guys are looking for points, they're looking for position, they're looking for something to get them ahead in the final standings of the OCRP iRacing League. And uh, coming out of Pocono, you were not here for the Pocono race. It was a caution fest. A lot of drivers very upset with the uh, performance of the league. Um, and that bled over into the week where there was a lot of people not happy with other drivers. Now, hey, when you're coming to Bristol, does that mean it's time to uh, finally get your revenge of what happened last week? We'll find out tonight. Well, I mean, Jeff, drivers have very long memories. Whatever happens the week before, whatever happens two weeks before that, these drivers are gonna remember. They're definitely gonna be like, hey, that so-and-so happened to me, that so-and-so already happened, and guess what? They're gonna take it out here, and, and here it's even tighter quarters in the Super Speedway uh, Pocono. These guys are gonna be right next to each other all night, beating, banging, hitting their sheet metal back and forth. If you thought, that last week, Pocono was a caution fest, get ready to pop some, a lot of popcorn because you are going to be in for a long race tonight. I'm uh, I'm not so sure. Maybe, you know, maybe it'll be a little bit different. Maybe these guys actually are going to calm down a bit and uh, maybe they're going to actually try to get some green flag racing in tonight, but it's, it's pretty difficult to do that here at Bristol. Bristol's a very, very small, small track. It is only, only a half a mile around this place. Four turns, of course, and the track temp. Let's talk about that. 68 degrees under the lights here in Bristol. That's going to mean uh, there's going to be a lot more grip uh, than uh, if it were a day race here at Bristol. Look at the top five right now in the standings in the warm-up as we have five seconds left in that. Right there at the top, you've got John Borst, the beast in the 71 truck. He's been uh, non-stop, uh, you know, uh, showing his muscle in this league so far. But have a look here in a second. You got Ryan Stewart. Ryan Stewart, Michael Long, Aaron Millerman, Alexander Reno, all in the top five in practice. Those are all benefits to those to the guys who are running back in the points. But here's what, here's what I'm curious about. Wes Graham, he's won three races as of right now. He is 56 points, 55 points ahead of Charles Gray in second, Alexander Reno in third, Sahil Mustak in fourth, and Eric O'Neill top five in this in season points so far. Uh, tonight, Wes Graham has a good chance to put, his, to put a stranglehold on this series if he wins again tonight. He's got three of, uh, of six so far. Uh, do you think Wes Graham can make it four for seven? He very well could do it. Uh, we've seen him perform... Um, not in this league, but I've seen him perform at Bristol uh, in other uh, racing series, and he's done very well here. Now, one person we can talk about is Michael Long in that 29 truck, and he was the upset last week getting his first win in the series at Pocono. And what a win that was. If you're going to win anywhere, Pocono is one of those places where you're going to make a statement while you win because it's not like any other super speedway. Those three turns, the, the tricky triangles, they call it, it lives up to that name because you are zooming fast out into those straightaways and you got to negotiate those turns just right. Otherwise, your truck's going to go a long way out of the way. Preliminary results coming in right now. Jeff Coburn is on the pole, but with Aaron Millerman and Eric O'Neill turning in times all around 15 seconds-ish, uh, I've got a feeling that may not last for long. It may not. And let's talk a little bit about the 52 of Millerman. Millerman was a guy that started off last year in the OCRP uh, iRacing League um, in the last series. I, I guess that was technically this year, but uh, in the last series... Um, in the Canon car and watching him start out there uh, being a person that was always in the back got into the middle uh, never really saw him fighting out front but here when he uh, has been given uh, more horsepower uh, in, a, in, in a heck of a lot of different diverse tracks out there when it comes to ovals uh, it's been awesome to see him blossom as a driver he's, he's one to watch tonight for sure we saw him 
almost win it at Pocono, and maybe he is hungry enough to get it done here at Bristol. And that's a really cool thing about these leagues, Jeff. You, you watch drivers mature. You watch drivers uh, grow, grow as racers, as, uh, as drivers, as gamers, in fact. And it's really neat watching their individual growth, watching them change, and watching them adjust their style for the drivers around them. I, you know, and you don't get this in open racing per se. You don't get that kind of growth. You don't get that kind of experience. And it's always fun to watch drivers uh, move up the ranks, if you will, even if it's just you know to to a league like this. You have a lot of great guys who drive well and have a lot of fun, and that is what ninety nine percent of gaming is all about. The other half, the other 1%, of course, is, you know, making money. But who would, we wouldn't know about the big bucks. John <laughs> Boris, Wes Graham now on the top of the pole. There you and are. I think that's going to create some trouble, Jeff. That is. Uh, you know, we're talking about Wes Graham before, and, and I think that he has what it takes to get it done here at Bristol. I've seen him uh, race here before. He's uh, He is one to watch for sure. But John Boris just cannot be stopped. He keeps – maybe it's a little bit of aggression that he has – he starts off so strong, and if he makes a mistake on pit road, he gets caught up in some sort of accident. We've seen him get very impatient and start getting in uh, in little uh, kerfuffles with some other drivers out there, and, and they get upset about that. Uh, and that's been one of his uh, one of his uh, downfalls in this uh, series so far. He's been very strong, but he needs to try to you know park some of those feelings and and, and maybe take some patience and and win a race. Um, let's talk a little bit about Bristol before we're done here uh, with qualifying. Half a mile around this place, very, very steep turns. But what do you think they're going to be doing tonight? You think everybody's going to be going up against the wall? Are they going to be at the bottom? Remember, we don't have that epoxy or whatever you want to call it, uh, the resin. We don't have that here on this track. This is the older version of Bristol and the iRacing series. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm not really sure. It depends on where the rubber is laid down, but I think most of these guys are going to be driving up next to the wall. Uh, you definitely do have two lanes of racing here at Bristol. You've got that outside wall, which is the preferred lane, and then if you want to do some passing, if you want to try to get around lap traffic, that inside lane can be a place to go, but you have to have the tires and you have to have the drive to make it happen. Remember, these guys were all working on identical setups. The only thing they can adjust is brake bias, and steering ratio. And you'd be those really surprised. Look- you'd be really surprised about how much of a difference that does make. And uh, we saw it earlier. A lot of the guys were upset that they were not prepared for Pocono. And now we have drivers that said, hey, anytime you want to get a hold of me, let me know. I will share my settings with you. And maybe we can all get around this place in one piece. And that's going to be very important tonight because the racing officials are now instituting a brand new system for how incidents will be evaluated. There's going to be a three strike system. Uh, if you get, if you cause two incidents or you're judged to have caused two incidents, you could get an end of longest line. You could be forced to do a pass through on the uh, on on pit road. Uh, and if you hit three strikes, if you have three incidents that are attributed to you, you're parked for the night. You're done. Say good night. As uh, so, these guys will be a little more cautious. I think, Jeff. I think there's going to be a little more. Uh, uh, discretion exercised as they want to make it through all 200 laps tonight. There was a lot of discussion about the change in possibly uh, making fast repairs a less amount than five. Uh, That was not uh, 100% uh, taken all the way through, so I don't believe they have changed or amended that in any way. So the difference is that they're going to be watching. Race Control is going to say, hey, this is not the place to do uh, what we saw at Pocono. And if we see you doing it here tonight, we're going to park you. And, and, you know, honestly, that's not a bad thing. Honestly, that gives everybody a little more parity. It gives everyone a chance to, to or a reason, I should say, to run cleaner, to run everyone the way they'd want to be raced. And, uh, you know, sometimes you need that enforcement. Like I said, Jeff, racers have very long memories. And uh, I've got a feeling that tonight you're going to see a couple of those memories come back as these guys go side-by-side racing. Absolutely. 200 laps around here tonight. We're going to keep an eye on that as we have a nice overhead uh, view here of Bristol Motor Speedway. Waiting for some guys to finish uh, gridding before we get going here uh, in just a few moments. And only uh, going to take uh, one lap or probably about two laps here uh, before we get going green. 
Probably probably do about two laps. It's a very short track. If that half a mile is not very long, considering some of the races or tracks we've seen earlier throughout the season. When you've been to places like like even Martinsville feels long compared to this. Right. This really is four turns and half a straightaway and, and you're all and you're done. Two hundred laps is gonna be nothing here tonight. If we have green all the way through, this race could be done in about a half hour. Let's look at our grid. We got uh, row one here. John R. Borst on your pole. Outside of him, Wes Graham in the 88 truck. Uh, in row two, you've got Michael Long in the 29 and Alex Reno in the 22 right behind them. In row number four, in row number three, I say Jeff Coburn and Aaron Millerman will start row fifth and sixth. In row four, Chris Mason, Charles Gray, second in points, will start seventh and eighth. Robert Keller will be on the inside of row number five. And on the outside of him, Tony Wilson, the 76 machine. And uh, row six is going to be Eric O'Neill in a 37 truck, one to watch tonight. Uh, Josh Jones in the three. And uh, bringing up the back right there in row seven is going to be the 77 of Hondo Longmire. Also, also taking time to see Heel Mustak, Scott Barkman, Ryan Stewart. Lights are out. Trucks are away. John Borst is in control of the field as we go. Green flag racing for the first time tonight. And he is going to hold him back quite a bit as we go down back through turns three and four and get ready to go green flag racing. And we are going to go green flag racing here as the Mustang pace car darts down to the bottom of the track. Green the 71 flag, green truck, your control truck. Green flag in the air at Bristol. And John R. Borst wastes no time. He gets a huge jump, and he's going to run right in the middle, holding off West Graham, Michael Long. Behind them, another pair, Alexander Reno and Jeff Coburn, running side by side. But John Borst in the Extra Machine Chevrolet, Extra Life Chevrolet, running the show in lap one. And everybody pretty much knows the tail right behind there. Looking all the way back in the middle of the field, we have a little bit of a battle between the 22 and the 91 of Coburn. Uh, that's the 22 of Alex Reno. And uh, pretty much single file all the way back until, well, it looks like Millerman's going to try to make a move on him now. Way back in the back of the field, Joshua Jones makes the move on Scott Barkman. And they will continue to go side by side, battling for position number 16 the last one on the field everyone else though looks like they've kind of settled in a little bit uh-oh as west graham makes contact with the wall going through one and two that's going to slow him down right, opens the door for long and first caution is out the first caution is indeed out we're going to find out what happened uh there very shortly i don't think i saw west get into the wall and i'm trying to find out why that is but we're going to go back uh a few and we're going to find out well, Jeff, actually, it looks like the caution flag is... Uh, we'll go back to Wes here in a minute. But it looks okay. like the incident that brought out the caution has involved the uh, 52 of Aaron Millerman and the 6 of Chris Mason at the start-finish line. It looks like Mason accidentally swiped, sideswipes Millerman. Millerman may have drifted up into his lane, and he's going to spin out in front of the rest of the field, and uh, that will bring out caution number one for the evening. Yeah, there was the contact right there with Mason, and uh, there goes the 52 around. It looks like the 77 truck did get some damage on that left-hand side. Now, left-hand, the good news is, at a track like this, at a very small track like this, you don't have to worry too much about your aero positioning. The bad news is, the bad news is, you can't, don't want to also beat the heck out of the truck either, because it will hurt you, and it will hurt how you steer, it will hurt how you get around this track, and ultimately, it will cost you positions. Now, I do want to go back to uh, lap four, where Wes Graham was coming into turns one and two. It looks like he just negotiated his entry into the turn a little too late, and right there about the Pepsi signs, that's where he scraped, it looks like he scraped the wall a little bit. That could be his, uh... That could be his exhaust, but I really feel like he kissed the wall right there, right around the Pepsi signs. Looks like uh, West, or sorry, uh, Hondo Longmire, the 77 truck, is going to bring that down pit road and get that fixed. The problem with that damage there that I was looking at on the TV was that uh, the left front looks like it took the brunt of it, and that might have knocked his toe out. So he's going to come down, get four tires on it, get a fast repair, and get back out there. So all throughout the field, no change, no changes overall uh through through the running order john boris continues to lead Wes graham despite what might have been an incident is number two michael long third jeff coburn fourth and alexander reno rounding out your top five so far not a whole lot of action which is not a bad thing especially if your name is john r boris he's still looking 
for win number one, and I've got a feeling tonight might be the night he gets it. You might be correct. We're looking all the way back there uh, at the fan favorites in the 12th truck. Ryan Stewart, he's in the 12th position. And Sahil Mustak uh, in 11th. What happened with those guys in the back? Did some of those guys show up without uh, getting any uh, qualifying in? Uh, we looks like we might have had a, a couple trucks get in without qual without qualifying. Uh, looks like, um, let's see now, Sahil Mustak, uh, Siv Ryan, Ryan Stewart, Scott, and Scott Barkman all started at the very end of the field because they just didn't get qualifying time. That's got to be a strategy move, Jeff. That's got to be a, I don't want to get involved in the craziness up front. I'm going to run around the back, wait for everyone to wreck themselves out, and ultimately take the uh, take the checker flag here. I don't know, though, if that strategy is going to work out for him. Well, I mean, let's look at it. You've got 200 laps around this place. Uh, it's going it's to be it's going to be a smart call if you don't uh, do that right off the off the bat. So, looks like the uh, lights are out on the pace car, or they are going to be this time. Uh, they are out on the pace car, but we're going to be going back green flag racing here very shortly. So John Boris will elect to start from the outside. Bold move on his part, but I think that's where all the grip is going to be. That's where the preferred racing line will be, as you mentioned, Jeff. So John Boris will take the out. We'll start from the outside. Wes Graham on the inside, and we go from there. Pace car down on flag. pit road, and John Boris wastes no time hitting the lap pedal. We're back racing on lap 10. Back racing, and uh, looks like he did decide to stick to the top lane. I think a lot of guys are starting to do that. Uh, they're following suit, but look at the 71 truck running in the middle of three and four there. So it looks like he's he's running the middle of the track all the way around. Meanwhile, someone who's trying to make the low line work is Alex Iterino, Aviator Alex in the 22, trying to get past the six of Chris Mason, the Cadbury Cream Egg Chevrolet, uh, still holding him off on the outside. Now Charles Gray comes in in that 87 miles oh. machine. The six goes around. He's gonna call up the second caution flag for tonight, no caution stays out. No, here it comes. Caution is out. Huge, huge pileup happening back there, and it all started in front with the six truck. We're going to slow it down a little bit for you guys, and we're going to find out exactly what happened here. It looks like the six and the 22 are racing, and we saw the 87 to Charles Gray. I thought he got in the wall, but it was the six that got in the wall. Lost control, hits the wall there, gets into the 87 to Gray, uh, and continues to crash up on the top. He locks it down. The 12 gets into the wall, but does get out of the way of the 6 in time. And the 6 comes down the track, not holding the brakes. And the 52 hits the 6. I don't think the 52 is going to be happy about that. Oh, I think there's a lot of guys who are going to be really sour about how that ended. And you know, I'm talking about Alex Reno. I'm talking about uh, Charles Gray. Both those guys had great runs. And I hate to say it, but Chris Mason, who's now on pit road, getting one of those quick fixes taken care of on his Cadbury Cream Egg uh, Chevrolet. I, I, I hate to say it, but it looks like he just ran out of talent there. Yeah, it looks like he just got a little loose coming off of the corner there and got into the, the wall. And what happens here at Bristol, you know, you, you have so, you're putting the pedal down and you're committing. Every single time you come off that corner, you're committing to where you are. So if you hit the wall, that's because you committed a little too, uh, a little too early. Um, so I think that's what happened there, and it just had that ricochet effect where he just had nowhere to go once uh, he got the wall. But that does benefit a handful of drivers. Wes Graham still stays in second, Michael Long third, Jeff Cobra in fourth, Alexander Reno, Charles Gray, despite the damages with spoiler, he'll stay out. They will move up a position, and look who's now in the top ten. Sahil Mustak in the Fanatic 18 toy, eight, number 18 Toyota. Uh, getting rid of the uh, of the ponies there. I kind of missed the, the rainbow on that one. Yeah, I don't know what happened there, but uh, maybe he's just running different colors tonight. Um, I, I couldn't even find the truck earlier when he was out on the track because I was looking for the pink pony, but uh, looks like he's got a nice-looking uh, Interstate Batteries-style uh, 18 truck tonight. He does. It's very classy-looking, but uh, so he'll bring back the ponies, man. We, we miss the ponies. I miss the ponies and rainbows anyways. It's just personal personal uh, preference. Maybe he's uh, he's tired of the rainbows and ponies and sunshine. He's like, you know what? It's time to get it done here. I, he had a lot of great um, racing uh, and, uh, and, and results in the beginning of this series, but lately he's just been getting caught up in uh, a lot of accidents, and it's, it's hurt him a lot in the, uh, in the standings. 
Uh, you know, the good news is he's still right in the hunt of it. We're only halfway through with the series after tonight's race, and he's going to be, and he's right there in fourth. So he still has a, a shot at the championship. He's still uh, in a good place to win it, but he's got to get past Forst. He's got to get past the perennial winner, Russ Graham, Michael Long, and company if he wants to win tonight's race. So far, we have only completed 15 laps here, 185 remain. We've only had two cautions for nine laps, and that's going to make it 10 laps there. Uh, so the lights are out on the pace car, and we'll be going green next time. And once again, no surprise, John Borst will select the outside lane to go at it. Uh, so Wes Graham be second, Michael Long third, Jeff Coburn fourth, and Alex Reno, your top five, Charles Grace, Sahil Mustek, Robert Keller, Eric O'Neill, and Hondo Longmire rounding out your top ten. Let's go back to some green flag racing and hope we get a good long run tonight. Yeah, and uh, also new colors I'm noticing is that 29 truck. Uh, that's a whole new paint scheme on him there. Uh, Hearts to Homes, it looks like. Uh, on that truck tonight. Pace green cars flag, away, and the green flag is in the air. The 71 truck wastes no time at all, and he is on his way with Graham and tow. Borst wastes no time. He's back up in first. Graham second, Michael Long third, Jeff Coburn now under fire, and Charles Gray now has a little, a little challenge underneath him. So he'll Mustak trying to pass him on the low side. Can he make it through? Yes, he will, and turns one and two. Yeah, it looks like uh, Sahil got around the, the 87 of uh, Gray quite easily there. So maybe Gray just kind of gave him the position. I'm not really sure what happened there. But uh, regardless, uh, he had no problems giving up that spot. But he's now under fire by the 22, uh, and he's all over the back bumper of the 18. I've got to wonder if the back spoiler of Charles Gray is hurting him. But that back spoiler and the tail get punched in like that, I'm wondering if he's not getting the downforce he needs to those rear tires to give him the drive and give him that little boost he needs around this track. Well, looking at the uh, front, we're, we're riding on board here with uh, Charles Gray. You can see him riding this uh, top lane, uh, kind of middle of the top lane uh, run here. Uh, and we see a lot of crumpled up damage on that right front of that truck. So maybe that's hurting his handling a little bit. Maybe it knocked in the toe. We're not really sure but uh, it's definitely uh, not helping him. He's definitely going to need to think about using a, a quick fix and sooner rather than later. If a caution comes out, don't expect to see Gray down on pit road and to the attention of his crew. Up front, nothing changes. Uh, John Boer still remains number one, Wes Graham second, and Michael Long in third, all running within, within about two or three truck lengths of each other. Yeah, and look at the 88 of Graham. He's riding right all the way up against the wall. He knows how to get around here at Bristol. And now it looks like maybe uh, Borst is starting to mirror drive him a little bit and see if he's making any gains by running that line. Uh, and he's uh, changing it as well because we've seen Borst running in the middle all night. We've seen Morse kind of run the middle. It seems to be, it seems to work for him. And where Borse goes, Wes Graham is going. But in turns one and two, it definitely seems like Graham likes that outside line, likes going up on the wall. John R. Borse will follow him up there. The good news is the 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 very the variables between them, the the distance between them is pretty stable right now. Three tenths of a second between John Borse and Wes Graham. Another three tenths of a second between Graham and Long. These guys aren't going anywhere in a hurry, but they do know that every lap is one less lap they've got to keep to catch up and win the race. Completing uh, lap 27 is uh, will be at lap 28 now of 200. A lot of racing to go here tonight, and it's good to see these guys are taking the new rules seriously, and they're really uh, uh, you know thinking about every move they make out here on the track. We're seeing a lot of green flag racing, and I think that that's what we need in this league right now. Oh, absolutely it is. You, you see a lot of guys taking it seriously, being very cautious as they get around. And, and even right here, Sahil Mustak makes the move on Jeff Coburn to pick up position number four. Very clean move. A lot of respect between those two drivers to make that switch. Jeff Coburn looking for the crossover, but not looking to retaliate. Lots of maturity there. Got to tip my hat to those drivers. Yeah, and I think uh, maybe the 91 learned a little bit about uh, last week at Pocono uh, getting uh, involved in some accidents based off of patience. And at a really short track like Bristol, patience is what is needed. What is more, what's more annoying, honestly, uh, I've driven this track so many times. Uh, it's when you have a guy at your door and he just won't leave. You have to, you have only so much room 
that you're willing to give on your line. And when you got a guy right there that just will not back down, it's pretty frustrating. Uh, uh, Alex Reno just learned that one the hard way. Let's jump over to the 22 now real quick and see the, the, the battle going on here for position number six, seven, and eight. Gray just gave uh, Reno a shot to the shorts in, uh, going into the turn. Ab Alexander Reno able to hold on to that truck, though, and he will continue to hold position number six. Now, Sib Ryan and Ryan Stewart in the 7-Eleven uh, uh, Chevy Silverado. <laughs> <laughs> Chevy Silverado, he's trying to now catch up well, to Charles Gray, see if he can get some position. Yeah, it used to be the 24-7 uh, truck, now 7-11 truck. Uh, and I'm looking at the 87 of Gray, and he does have significant damage on uh, on the back of that truck. If we ride on board here with uh, Ryan, you can see the damage on the back of that 87 quite a bit. Uh, let's talk a little bit about speed. Everybody's starting to uh, kind of fall in line and follow each other here. Uh, but speed's getting down the corner right now, about 139 miles per hour, it looked like. About 139, 140. So, you know, they're not running super fast. But the cool thing is, with these high banks at this track, they can carry a lot of that speed through the corners. And, you know, even though they're not flat-footing it, they're not flooring it all the way through, they're still going 110 in those big in those big high turns so they're carrying a lot of speed they're carrying a lot of racing with them as charles gray about to yield one more position to Siv ryan at this time we're going to let you guys listen in to the sounds of iRacing and as we crank it up here in bristol we got a truck around let's say the 76. caution's not yet out so right, yep caution never mind is it is, is yeah, it's the 76 of Wilson. Oh, and he just goosed it and lost control and hits the 77. That was not good and instantly tows his truck. I don't think Hondo Longmire is going to be happy with that at all. The 76 should have just held it down there until he was clear, but that did not happen. That was bad. That was what we call a poor judgment call. Uh, you know, I appreciate his, his enthusiasm, want to get back up the track, want to get back to green flag racing, but not at the expense of another racer. Honda Longmire definitely felt the brunt on the, of, of that incident, and uh, he is definitely going to need a quick fix as a result of this one, as looks like everyone's coming down pit road. Everybody's going to come down pit road, and that's including your leader, John Borst. We'll see who's uh, going in. Yep, everybody's down there. Who's going to be out first? Well, you think anybody's going to take any two tires? I don't think that's going to happen just yet. I think, I, well, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to say. It's it's only Pro 40 laps in. Probably not any two tire stops. You don't want to take that risk this early in the race. Boris, four tires. Graham, four tires. They are both down and away. Michael Long will fight with Sahil Mustak. And I think Mustak got that position. Did he take I four tires on his stop? Uh, no, you only took, took two, two tires. Yeah, we were just talking about, I'm not sure if driver's going to take four or if they're going to take two here. Uh, four would make sense about 40 laps into this race. Uh, that's a long time um, for uh, you to be out there, especially if you're going to deal with, uh, you know, heat cycles. Now, we had a long stretch of green flag racing there. Things could change. We could get back into caution mode, but I don't know. It looks like these drivers are starting to listen to uh, what race control said. They're like, we've had enough. We saw it last week. We won't see it again this time. So I think that uh, that might be making a uh, quite a bit of an impact on these drivers tonight. Jeff, want to make a correction. Seal Mustak did take four tires. He just had an incredible stop. So uh, hats off to that team for picking up, for getting them in the position to pick up, uh, what, about five positions from eighth now to third. Now he's going to be battling out with Wes Graham and John Boris for the lead. One to watch here for sure tonight. Man, the 18 started off in the very back uh, and then worked his way all the way to the middle and now through a great stop on that last one he finds himself in third and we'll find out maybe uh, the 18 has something but he was caught back there in dirty air a lot of people in chat asking where is the black flag for that sub for that 76 machine well tony wilson I feel like he, he may have been a little embarrassed by that incident because as soon as uh, as soon as that incident happened, he pulled it behind the wall. He is done for the night. So uh, I, I think he's got his own pu enough punishment there. Yeah, no, I would say so. I, I and honestly, I've been in that situation. There's so much horsepower in these trucks. You you you've got to really really respect how much it, you get frustrated because you just got in a crash. You're at the bottom of the track. You give it a little bit of gas and you just give it too much. And it just sends it around. I don't think he knew the 77 was there. I don't think the 77 knew he was there. 
Uh, and unfortunately, that cost uh, the 77 truck some damage. Lights are off on the first racing Ford Mustang pace car. So let's reset it for you one more time. John Borston first, Wes Graham in second. Sahil Mustak, after that incredible stop, will be up in third. Michael Long fourth, Jeff Coburn in fifth. Alexander Reno in sixth, Charles Gray seventh, Ryan Stewart eighth, Josh Jones ninth, and Eric O'Neill rounding out your top 10. Jeff, they're coming back to you, and that means only one thing. It's time to go back to back to green flag race. Back to green flag race, and we'll see if the 88 has anything for the 71. The 71's been very dominant on these green restarts. Flag, and flag. what can the 18 of a stack do? Green flag in the air once again. And here comes the 71 down into turn one with no incidents. And uh, looks like the 88's got a nice run to him. 88's got an incredible run. West Graham trying to make it four for four for eight or four for nine, I should say, after this race. But John Borst is holding him off, does not want to let him do that. Now here comes Michael Long. He's got to run in the 88, and he wants to get that truck in position too. Yeah, Michael Long uh, was uh, just about to uh, to get to, to make it on the 88 there, but uh, Wes said, nope, not yet. Uh, so everybody just kind of falls back into line, but we got some racing further back in the pack. One of those battles is the 22 uh, versus the 87 of Gray. We saw that battle heating up before we were at, yeah, at the caution flag. And now look who's in the middle of that mix. Ryan Stewart holding off both Alex Reno and Charles Gray out there. Those guys, he, he, Ryan Stewart is making that truck as wide as he can out there. He's doing everything he can to make sure those drivers behind him do not get around him. And he's doing a good job so far. But Reno's got a great run. He seemed to figure out this setup. And his uh, Aviator Chevrolet could be up for the next position if Ryan Stewart makes a mistake. And yeah, riding aboard here with uh, with Alex Reno in the 22 a truck. Let's talk a little bit about the 12. He was not present for last week's race, and uh, that does something to you. If you haven't been behind the wheel, even if you're in practice, it doesn't matter. If you ha if, if you are off by a week uh, in, in getting your rhythm with the rest of the drivers under green flag racing conditions, well, it can be a little bit of a psych to you, and maybe that's what happened with the 12 earlier tonight, but he's definitely showing his uh, his um, patience, and he's moved himself up into a respectable position. Patience is definitely the name of the game at, at Bristol. This is not a track where, where you want to burn it all down really quick because you will lose grip, and that truck will get loose on you in a hurry, and you do not want to get loose on a half-mile track. A lot of guys showing a lot of patience out here, especially when it comes to, to timing passes and timing those runs. Sahil Mustak, one of them right now, getting into the wall just a little bit, oh, uh, yeah. both off in the middle of turn three and four and on the exit. I think he's having a little bit of trouble figuring out uh, where he wants to be in position number four here, but if he can calm down and make it work, that Toyota could work for him at the end of the day. Oh, it, it uh, surely can. Uh, I see a lot of people um, in the Twitch chat actually having a little bit of uh, a discrepancy about that restart. And let's remind you that with iRacing, you don't have a restart zone. Basically, you will not be penalized the moment that that pace car goes down pit road. It is your control. You can take off whenever you want, early on, later. Uh, you can wait for the green flag if you'd like. But no one says you have to do that. So you uh, that does not negate a actual jump of the restart. And the 18 got in the wall there a little bit. So Mustak now under fire from Jeff Coburn and Ryan Stewart. Both of those trucks looking to pick up position if uh, Sahil Mustak can't figure out where he wants to put the truck and where he wants to go. You see uh, Stewart now trying that low line, seeing if he can make it work for him down there at the bottom. So far, no luck. Now Alexander Reno in the mix as well. A lot of guys now hunting for position number four as your top three start to break away. Well, the 29 along almost had West there in that corner, but uh, it looks like he backed out of it. Maybe it was a little too close. They, those guys were getting uh, really close to uh, wrecking coming off of turn four there a little while ago. And it looks like uh, the 29 along, maybe, maybe that's what happened. The 88 just got in the wall there. And we've seen a lot of these guys tonight getting into the wall. It's pretty insane. We, we talk about these guys earning uh, Darlington stripes. Tonight, they're earning Bristol stripes as they try to run as close to the wall as possible. You mentioned it uh, at the beginning of the show, Jeff, tonight, uh, the outside lane right up against the wall. That is where the speed is, and that's where they can carry over a lot of the speed 
going through the turns. And as a result, sometimes you just overcalculate it, you undercalculate it, and end up flattening out the right side of the truck. Not a bad thing if you're on a if you're on a short track like this, but it will wear out your tires and it will hurt those good years underneath you in the end. That could lead to a blowout, that could lead to lost grip. Uh, Moral story, you just don't want to hit the wall glue with the top. We have a truck around. It's the four of Keller, but it uh, looks like Josh Jones and three is about to go down one lap. He's hoping for a caution, and he is going to be granted with that. We're going to find out what happened with the four truck here in just a few moments for you guys as we back up things. It looks like he just lost it coming off the corner here. Yeah, taking a look at that replay one more time. He was under fire from the 16 of Scott Barkman going into the turns one and two, or sorry, three and four, it looks like. He just lost it in, in, into the wall, crossed our finish line, and spun out in front of the field, and that will bring out the caution flag once again. But hey, four caution flags so far at, at Bristol in this group? That's a uh, that's a great number. I am impressed. I'm very impressed. I, I really do think that a lot of those guys had heart to heart with each other and said, hey, guys, if we are going to have fun running in this series, we've got to get away from the yellow flag curse. And it was brutal at Pocono because it's such a long track, and that means that the pace laps are even longer. Let's say the 77 of Longmire getting a lap back there, but the four of Keller. Had a lot of smoke coming out of that truck. I'm not sure uh, what's going on with that, but I think he's going to have to bring it down uh, and get a fast repair. Jeff Ryan Stewart went down pit road this last time by. He it looks like he got four tires and a full tank of fuel uh, and might have gotten some repair damage done, it looks like, as well on that 7-Eleven Chevrolet. I'm curious as to what his end game is here. Is he open to change the, uh, the pit strategy a little bit and go off cycle from your leaders to try to pick up some positions at the end? I uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to figure out what he's hoping to do here. I think that you might be right. I think that the 12 uh, saw this opportunity at a caution. It says slap 66. And I think he's banking on green flag laps that are going to come later on down the road. And, and I, I, based off of the racing we've seen tonight, and we almost had our first truck be lapped tonight, uh, I think that that might have been a good move, at least to see uh, you know, if those guys are going to um, play that game or if they're going to bank on cautions. Robert Keller, the first uh, victim of the three-strike rule, he will be uh, adjudicated as as a party responsible in that last incident. He will go to the end of the longest line for this restart when we go back to green flag racing. But up front, nothing has changed. Uh, Borst up front, Graham, Seville, Mustak, and Jeff Coburn uh, still in your top five. Uh, Alexander Reno, top five. But here's the guy I'm looking, I'm really interested in right now. The driver of that Monster Energy Chevrolet, that's Charles Gray, in position number six. He's second in points, so he knows what's on the line for him tonight. How long does he stalk outside of the top five before he starts making moves? Yeah, I'm looking further back in the field. Michael Long in the seventh, uh, uh, eighth to Honda Longmire, ninth to Ryan Stewart, Josh Jones in that three truck in the, in the top ten, actually, now, uh, which is, is interesting because he was just about to go down a lap. Uh, you got Eric O'Neill. 37 truck in 11th and then that's the last truck on the lead lap 12th on back is uh you got scott barkman two laps down robert keller uh, we saw him in that last incident he's four laps down now the 76 of wilson uh, is 29 laps and we believe he took it behind the wall and aaron millerman 45 uh behind the wall as well a huge 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 uh disappointment for that team tonight as they did really well at Pocono and really well in practice, uh, only to be caught up in a big mess tonight. Chris Mason, 55 laps as well. I think he's been parked. Pace, the lights are off on the pace car. Less than a lap to go. Let's reset it for you real quick. John Boris, Wes Graham, row number one. Sahil Mistak, Jeff Coburn, row two. Alexander Reno, Charles Gray, row three. As, Al as John Borst will once again restart from the high side. Green flag flies and once again wastes no time. He's on the loud pedal back in position number one. Wes Graham, Seal Mustak, Jeff Coburn falling behind. And I'm watching back here the 88 of Graham holding off the 18. I was seeing if the 18 had anything for him, but uh, we got a little bit of a battle going on back here. And that is the 22 truck of Alex Reno, and you guessed it, uh, with the 87. But here's Ryan on the charge on the outside. 
It's Ryan Stewart trying to do everything he can to get around AV getter Alex, and he will do it this time, and he's going to bring a friend with him. Michael Long also coming along for the ride, so Alex Reno loses two positions in that in, or in that exchange, uh, but still no, cha no challenges up front. Yep, out front's John Morston at this time. As long as we can keep it green, we're going to bring you guys some crank it up and listen to the sounds of iRacing. So now they're starting to tie it up, up front. John Borst in front, Wes Graham second, Sahil Mustak joining that group as well. Look who's up in the mix as well. The 87 of Charles Gray, under fire from Ryan Stewart. Three wide as they Dude. push Stewart, as they push Charles Gray into the wall. Yeah, and there goes Michael Long. He's around, and he's going to hold it down to the bottom of the track, and there is the caution. We'll find out what happened there uh, in just a few moments. We were trying to go to crank it up for you guys so you guys could listen, but uh, we had too much action happening on the track. We had to cut from that immediately, so we do apologize. We'll try to get you uh, crank it up in there uh, when we can, but we're going to find out what happened here with the 12. Mostly, uh, get that crank it up mostly because we need a break from, from all this action, but <laughs> as long as it's going on, we're going to keep uh, we're going to bringing you live here on Twitch.tv. So let's go back to that incident real quick. It was a heck of a battle in that mix going into three and four. Long was had a great run on Charles Gray, but the question was, could he hold it? Gray, under fire, couldn't hold it, goes into the wall, comes down onto the 29. The 29 kind of clips him back into the wall. The problem is Michael Long could not hold off that car. He just couldn't hold on after it got clipped by Gray, and that sent him nose first into the wall, and that will bring out our fifth caution of the evening. Yeah, right along here with Michael Long. He just had nowhere to really go. They both uh, got in the wall there, uh, and that's a matter of just getting hard in the brakes. When you get hard in the brakes like that, the truck just really loses a lot of grip, and that's exactly what happened. We're gonna so take a, lots. We're going to take a quick what? break here really quick so uh, we can uh, rest our voices, but uh, we'll be right back with more racing here at Bristol. Welcome back to Bristol. We are currently under caution. And if we look here, we've had five cautions tonight, 24 laps. Uh, and uh, now we've kind of hit that moment of, are we going to get past the cautions tonight or are we going to have them fly? But uh, we've had a lot of green flag racing tonight. We have 124 laps to go and we have completed 76. Your leader is John Borst. And he has led every single lap here tonight from pole to pole so far. Borst looking for his first win in the uh, in the OCRP iRacing League. And correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, but he was the guy who showed up in the Opens and uh, worked his way into the league just by being a great driver. He did, and uh, it seemed that whenever that happened, a lot of drivers weren't too happy about it because this guy, I mean, look, he's got an I rating of 29.89. He's an A-class driver with a 3.42 safety rating. Uh, he's a great driver. Um, but what has happened we've seen in the past of the uh, the series before uh, the truck series, and that was just patience, patience being gone. Uh, and a lot of these guys feel that way. But we'll have to see what happens here tonight as the pace car's away and green flag is back in the air at Bristol. Borst hits the lap pedal hard, and he will continue his dominance over Bristol. So he'll miss that second. Ryan Stewart now in third, and the battle is around position number four. It's Josh Jones, Eric O'Neill and company all trying to get position, all shifting back and forth, trying to figure out where the hotline is. And we haven't talked much about Josh Jones in the three truck. He's been uh, a silent one in this race. We saw him almost go down a lap, and now he is up there in the mix in position number five right now. 
position number five, and he's going to go way high. He's going to touch the wall at three and four. Let West Graham by. It looks like Jeff Coburn's going to get around Josh Jones as well. Yeah, it looks like uh, the three got loose big time right there. We're keeping an eye on him. Uh, he's just really trying to fight that truck, but behind him, he got a battle between uh, the uh, 77 of Longmire and 87 of Gray for eighth right now. A lot of racing all over the place. It looks like 37 is blowing up. Gray was given the end of longest line penalty. He had his first strike for that incident earlier in the race, so he did not go down pit road. He just ended up getting involved in another incident as he pushes up uh, the 29 of uh, check the 29 machine of Michael Long into the wall. It looks like uh, he gave the Michael Long a little bit of a retribution there for what he did to him earlier. Yeah, we were watching the uh, 37 of O'Neill going down on a pit road. I'm not sure what happened to his truck, but it definitely is uh, not looking good. And maybe he'll be able to get it to pit road and get a fast repair. Uh, so I didn't get to see a whole lot of that battle happening up there. But now we're watching side side a uh, side to side battle for ninth. Is everybody really fighting to stay on the top ten? There's contact with the three of Jones, and they are around the 87s around, and the caution flies. They're still oh wrecking. boy. Longmire involved. That was uh, not good for him. We're going to wind it back here for you guys and uh, let you see what exactly happened here because there was a whole lot. Oh, boy. That's all I got to say about that incident. Uh, it was brewing. It was coming. And uh, you, we just kind of saw the, the brunt of it happen right in front of Charles Gray. Continued bad luck for the driver of the uh, 80, or the uh, Monster Energy Chevrolet. The three, it starts with the three of Josh Jones. He gets into the wall, gets bumped down a lane right in front of uh, of Gray. The Gray then collects Honda Logmeyer, who once again collects Josh Jones. The 19 uh, machine is also involved in that. That's Scott Barkman. And uh, so four trucks ultimately involved in that incident. And I'm really interested to see who uh, who's going to get the penalty for that one. Because I've got a feeling somebody is as Pitt Road gets busy. I don't know. It looked like to me that the three of Josh Jones uh, just got loose, got in the wall, had nowhere to go as those guys were just racing really hard for that position. I don't think anybody's really at fault there other than uh, the three truck not being able to uh, to keep the truck off the wall. But uh, that's just kind of racing. That's just how it goes. At nearly the halfway point, we see a lot of trucks came down pit road that time by. John and all of them looking for basically the same thing. John Forrest, Wes Graham, Alex Reno, uh, Josh Jones, Sahil Mustak all came down to the attention of their crews. And it will be four tire stops for all of them as they go back to green flag or so will go back to green flag racing in a few laps here. So interesting moves watching them come down pit road. Now I've got a feeling they're on a uh, maybe like a 25 lap pit window plus or minus. I think they are We're watching this battle off of pit road right now to see who gets off uh, to, to get that track position. But we talked about earlier the 12 truck of Ryan Stewart making that call to come down pit road early and get tires and fuel. And uh, he decided he wanted to stay out. So Ryan Stewart, Siv Ryan, the fan favorite back now in first for the first lead change of the night. Jeff Coburn immediately behind him in second. Charles Gray is being scored as third, but I don't think that's going to hold on for very long. We'll see how uh, how it all shakes up here in just a moment when they cross the start finish line. Sahil Mustak, West Graham in the mix as well. Alex Reno, Honda Longmire, Scott Barkman. Uh, that pit stop changed a lot of things for a lot of drivers, Jeff. And I've got a feeling that that could have some major effects on how we play moving on this race. It really can. We've seen the 71 so dominant tonight, and all it takes is a little bit of a strategy, you know, call uh, by the uh, by the 12 of Stewart, the 91 of Coburn, and the 87 of Charles Gray. These guys staying out. Uh, that shook up everything. Now we're going to have to see the 71 be patient uh, and not get caught up in any wrecks, show his muscle here at Bristol, and get back up to the front. Oh, absolutely. There's going to be a lot of a, a complete change in strategy now as these guys get ready to go back green flag racing. The lights are off. They're going to come back at it in about one more lap. Here is how they shake it up right now. Ryan Stewart is going to restart from the outside lane in position number one. Jeff Coburn on his outside. Charles Gray, John Boris will be row number two. Sahil Mustak, Wes Graham, row number three. Alex Reno, Hondo Longmire in row number four. And Alex Reno, the last one on the lead lap. Pace car about to be down and away. We're going to get back to green flag racing here. And uh, the 12 truck's going to be your control truck. That's Ryan Stewart. Green, green, green. 
Green Ryan flag. Stewart sees the green flag fly, and we are back to racing on lap 91, and immediately a battle for the lead side by side. Ryan Stewart trying to not only hold off Jeff Coburn, but here's John Borst back in the mix. Wes Graham also in the running. Watching that 71 truck, what a restart he had, and now he has set his sights on the 91 truck. He wants to get back up there to the front, and the 88 is falling right behind him, as it looks like the 71's running a little higher line than the 91. 71 is definitely trying to figure out where to go as Jeff Coburn now the 91 gets around the 12. 12 hits the wall. He's going to force a checkup. Now that creates some chaos in the field. Man, the 71 almost lost control there. He had nowhere to go. He's going to lose a ton of spots here. And that's a huge break for that 71 truck. There's a lot of racing to go here. Still about to the halfway point now. But uh, now the lead has been given to the 91 truck as everyone was racing for position there uh, from second on back. West, so, so West Graham will now have some major nose damage on the 88 truck. The 71 of John Boris, he's going to have a bashed in tailgate. And that splitter is going to be, that spoiler, I should say, is going to be messed up and will affect his downforce on those tires. So he's not going to get the runs he wants, but it all benefits Jeff Coburn, who for the first time tonight is in the lead. Ryan Stewart trying to do everything he can to clutch back up and give up back up to the lead. Yeah, we're looking at the back uh, bumper of Coburn in the 91 truck, and he is just sailing away from everybody. He's got almost a second lead on second, and that's Ryan Stewart there, but we got four trucks battling, and if you're the 91 truck, that's what you want to see. Hey, guys, go ahead and battle it out back there. I'm just going to check out. Chat is, is, is asking about the status of 71, that he might have a tire down. I checked all fours, and it looks like he's still running solid on all four Goodyear Wranglers underneath him. So uh, I don't know that he's got a tire down, but the way that's, that spoiler now sits with the Bastion tailgate, that will affect his downforce. If he doesn't have downforce on those back tires, he will lose power, and he's got a much bigger opportunity to spin out on that 71 Extra Life Chevrolet. And if that does happen, it will make it a lot harder for him to catch up to leaders and pass. What he needs right now is a yellow flag so he can get down to pit road, get a quick fix, and get back to the running. You got four trucks back here battling for that second and third position. Uh, and it looks like as of right now, well, here comes the 18 of Sahil. He's on the inside of 12, really tight. Almost got to his door there, but a lot of side-by-side -side action happening back here. Ryan Stewart will yield the position to Sahil Mustak, or will he? He gets a good run coming off turns three and four. Can he hold it through one and two? His tires might be giving way. Sahil Mustak betting on it as he stays underneath. Nope, he's going to try to back off one more and save it up for one more time. Riding on board with Sahil in the middle of this, uh, this uh, mess that is second, third, and fourth. But this is just good old-fashioned short track racing we're seeing here tonight. And a lot of these guys are being respectful and having a lot of fun here. Oh, these guys look like they are having a blast, especially if you're in that group two to six. Ryan Stewart holding off Sahil Mustak, Wes Graham, Alex Reno, and look who's making a comeback. John Boris is now on the low line trying to get around a run on Alex Reno. Yeah, John Boris just uh, lost all that momentum in that last uh, mishap, but man, he's really been on fire. Uh, showing us that, may, you know what, maybe the uh, the damage that we have on our spoiler isn't enough to ruin our night. So he's charging back forward, but he's got a lot of traffic to get around, and it's not helping that you've got everyone fighting as hard as they are up here for second and third. Sahil Mustak still trying to get the run on Ryan Stewart, almost pushes him up to the wall as they go into three and four, but Stewart's just too strong in three and four. He seems to have that great run that catches up every time and slingshots him back to the 18. I don't know, though, that his tires can hold off as Sahil Mustak will complete the pass in one and two, score him position number two. But all this infighting only benefits one guy. Jeff Coburn, who is now uh, 1.3 seconds ahead of the entire field. Yeah, he's uh, 1.3 seconds. He's definitely checked out, and that's exactly what he wanted to see. Uh, this is a bad. This is bad news for guys that are running in the very back because now they're going to be under fire uh, for going down a lap here shortly as he is uh, able to just complete. Uh, basically, at this point, you're just out here doing a time trial. You're running your laps, 
you're minding your own business and you're hoping that you don't see that yellow flag. Uh, I think that the 91 is banking on more cautions based on his strategy tonight, but that could change completely. We're not really sure. Well, we're, we're over. We're over halfway done with this race now. 90 laps, le 91 laps left before we hit the checkered flag. And Ryan Stewart is another guy who's definitely banking on another caution flag coming out. Remember, he's on a completely different pit strategy than everyone else on the field. He, when everyone else came down, he stayed out on his older tires to try to get the lead and pick up some bonus points for leading a lap. Now you see him starting to lose position. He started with Sahil Mustak. Now Michael Long under, behind him, trying to get underneath him and try to get around him. And behind him, Wes Graham slowly patiently waiting for his shot of the 12. Looking at the back of Sahil Mustak, and he's uh, got a nice uh, lead on third position right now, and that's exactly what he wanted. He was, he, I think he felt like he was being held up in traffic there. That's why he's being so aggressive. But now if we look off the back of the bumper of Sahil, you can see there's a lot of damage in the right front of that 12. Oh, and the three's around. All right, man. Caution is out. Caution is out. Caution flag comes out as Wes Graham comes around. John Borst comes around as well, but I don't think that's the incident that brought out the yellow flag. The three of Josh Jones is smoking down on uh, the on the apron there going into turns three and four. So I've got a feeling he was probably involved in that incident, but that is a godsend for some of those guys who were looking for an excuse to come down pit road. Indeed, the, the three just got loose off the corner and uh, got right into the wall there. We're going to slow it down for you guys so you can see exactly how it happened. Uh, the three just running really hard. You know he's by himself, uh, and uh, all it takes is for you to smack the wall like we saw there, and uh, you're around. So here he comes off the corner, smacks it off the start-finish line, and head first into the wall. Hard lick on the inside, line, or inside uh, lane there. I think that he's definitely going to have to bring that down. Uh, pit road and get that fixed as that will require him to use a fast repair lots of other guys coming down pit road as well john borst gets a quick repair he looks like he's gonna get four tires uh west graham not sure what the 12 is doing right now where is 12 he is on pit road he's on pit road i think he missed his spot he missed his box completely and had it back up that was uh very interesting looking not sure what happened with him at all but we're looking at the guys in the front and john borst is off who got off first? Well, we're not really sure. We're waiting for the uh, scoring to catch up here, and we'll find out who is leading. Jeff, it looks like Jeff Coburn got off first, West Graham second, and then John R. Borst uh, raced Alexander Reno off of Pit Road, and I think Reno will get the jump on John Borst. Charles Gray comes out fifth, and Ryan Stewart, who's had troubles missing his pit box tonight. Uh, this is, this, I believe, the second time he misses pit box. Uh, he will come out position number six, but the good news is he's now on the same rotation as everybody else, so he's got the same tires as fuel as everyone else in front of him. Uh, the bad news is, number one, if he does have another pit stop, can they do something to make that sign brighter? And number two, uh, you know, can he, with the talent in front of him, can he run them down and win this race? Well, I'm watching the 18 truck. He's got a lot of damage on that right side of that front of the truck there, and uh, he stayed out. He didn't want to get it fixed. He, I think he thinks that uh, maybe he can hang on to the truck a little bit longer at least uh, from, because he, from hitting the walls many times as he has tonight, uh, maybe he can stay out and, uh, and hope that track position will uh, be king here. But you've got some guys behind you that are going to have fresh tires and they're going to have their fast repairs and they're going to have a clean truck ready to go. Uh, Jeff, can I have a, a word with, with your chat real quick? For sure. Thank you. Uh, a chat is, is confused where exactly Bristol Motor Speedway is. Tennessee? Uh, it, it, it is not in England. It is not in Bristol, England. <laughs> no. It, uh, it, it is in uh, Tennessee on the border of Tennessee and Virginia. There's uh, The actual border of, this, of the state runs right through Main Street, Bristol. But for all intents and purposes, Bristol Motor Speedway is on the Tennessee side of of, uh, of the border, not the Virginia side. So, yeah, it's right there in uh, in Tennessee, it's a basically it's just a track in a small little town. That's basically all it is. There's there's really nothing else. I mean, the town's cool. If you get a chance to go, I absolutely recommend it. But otherwise, there's really not a whole lot there. Just the track, a lot of quaint townsfolk, and a really cool main street as they divide the entire thing up. So. Great flag about to fly one more time, and Jeff, look who's on the lead. That's going to be Sahil Mustak. 
now leading the entire crew to the green flag. So he'll stay out. We're going to see what he does here on this restart. Green flag back in the air. And Cobra in the 91 truck trying to power by him on the outside. And they will not, that will not happen. And it looks like the 88 truck now of Wes Graham is going to be uh, trying to take that lead away from the 18. Wes Graham has a good run on the inside. Can he get it though? Not this time. He's going to look through turns one and two one more time. And this time he will get it. Sahil Mustak forced to yield to Wes Graham, who's looking for his fourth win on the season. Jeff Coburn, who was leading earlier, he's now trying to get under Mustak as well. A lot of racing here. We're watching the 91 of Coburn try to run that bottom lane. We saw the 88 of Wes Graham run the bottom lane. He was able to get by the 18. Uh, and now the 91's going to try to do that, and it looks like he's going to be able to do it as well. Side by side, Jeff Coburn looks like he gives a little shove to uh, Chisiel Mustak. Mustak, once again, nowhere else to go, and he's going to go ahead and not yield the spot, but he's going to make it hard for him to get around. Jeff Coburn still side by side with Mustak, and look who's on the... Oh, no! John Borst! He was in the mix. He was on the wings. He's going to spin hard, hit the inside wall. No yellow flag, though, so we're going to keep running. No yellow flag, and it uh, looks like a lot of damage to that truck is going to break down to pit road. That's a tough break for the 71 uh, tonight. He is not going to be too pleased with that one. Your leader out front right now is Wes Graham in the 88 truck. In second, you've got uh, Coburn, but it looks like the 88, our leader, just smacked the wall. The, the driver I'm watching right now is Ryan Stewart. He's in position number five, but look what happened to him. He got the tailgate punched in once again, and that uh, and that uh, that spoiler is once again uh, bent around where that tailgate got punched in. That could hurt him. That could hurt his chances to get up front and get moving as John Boris now back on the track. And we got a little bit of a battle here. We're watching up front. Looks like Alex Reno is going to try to take that position away from Sahil in, three, in third. And uh, maybe there's a lot of damage. That right front damage we saw in that 18 truck, I think it's starting to uh, really show uh, that it's going to be a problem for that uh, team. Wes Graham continues to lead Jeff Coburn right behind him. Sahil Mustak now under fire from Aviator Alex. Alex Reno and Ryan Stewart rounding out the top five. John Borst currently being scored two laps down in position number nine. So even if a caution flag comes out, it's not going to help him. He's going to need at least two caution flags and for Scott Barkman to be flawless as well for him to get back on the lead lap. That major spin hurt him in a really big way. It really did because the caution did not come out. I guess race control said, no, we don't uh, think that it warrants us to throw the caution flag out. Unfortunately, and a lot of drivers here would feel the opposite. They'd say, why don't I get a caution flag when somebody's el you know, somebody else spins? Uh, they, d they get one. So I, I could see him being frustrated about that, but uh, it's, it's very bad. But, hey, it is Bristol. We still have a little bit of racing to go, and if we have a few cautions, well, maybe he could get back on the lead lap. Let's not rule anything out. Anything is possible still in this race, as it looks like Sahil Mustak may have made a date with the wall in turns three and four. He's going to continue running, but that opens the door for Alex Reno. He's running a completely different line. He's trying to go low, trying to catch up to Sahil Mustak and take position number three away. Riding on board with the uh, 22 truck of Reno, and we can see the difference in the line. Reno's trying to make the bottom uh, to middle lane work for him, and Sahil has uh, pretty much committed to the top lane. So Mustak now looks like he's doing a little bit of rear view mirror driving. He's gonna he's gonna do what the 22 is doing, hoping to keep him behind him. And uh, Reno, I think, just might have a faster truck right now. Uh, Ryan Stewart also in the mix as well as the 22 pokes his nose down, trying to get as close as he can to the 18. Can't slingshot him through three and four. Can he do it through one and two? All signs point to no. Not happening. And uh, one thing that the 71 truck has to remember here is he is currently scored in the ninth position. He's down two laps, and he's up front here racing with some guys that are on the lead lap. And this, we've seen this happen before in the series where these guys are racing this hard for positions that they shouldn't be uh, and it's frustrating for that driver. You know, I'm going to give a shout, though, for to uh, the 71 of John Borst. He, he's fighting as hard as he can out there because he knows he needs to get back on the lead lap. He's gambling on another caution. I'm gambling on another caution to come out. And if he can get that position, if he can get back 
uh, two, one lap down and then get around uh, Scott Parkman, he's going to have a great shot at, at winning the race. It looks like the three's back down on the, on the apron. Yeah, the three was down on the apron and did get a fast tow there. He was able to get rid of it, so we're going to find out what happened with the three truck for you here. It looks like it was a self-spin coming off the corner hard into the inside lane. He was able to hold those brakes on, and he will not affect the race at all. So he's going to be down on pit road getting a fast repair done. Your leader, Wes Graham. Wes Graham now has a time zone between him and Jeff Coburn on this track. Nearly 1.2 seconds between those two drivers. Sahil Mustak is holding off Alexander Reno and Ryan Stewart and John Borson still trying to get in the mix, still trying to race to his way back on to the lead laps. May not happen this time by, but he is driving that truck like he stole it, trying to get around Ryan Stewart and company. Wow, I'm really, I'm watching this 22 truck and he's been extremely impressive tonight with his driving skill. And look, now the 12 is gonna try to get around the 22 of Reno here. But Reno's been running that top lane. He's been he's been adjusting. He's one of those drivers that doesn't just do the same thing lap after lap. He is changing his lanes up. He's trying to find speed in the truck and he's able to do it. And, and, and look who makes a, a big move courtesy of John Boris. That's Ryan Stewart. He will get around Alex Reno and Michael Long with a push from the 71, and that's going to score him now position number four. I'm curious to see if Ryan Stewart's going to give him the courtesy back, though, and let him get around to start catching up to the leaders. I don't think he's going to, and the reason why is because it's that whole thing we talked about before. Hey, you're, you're two laps down. You shouldn't be racing me this hard. We've seen it happen time and time again. It breeds a really bad situation which usually ends up in a crash. However, I think that Ryan saw that, jumped out of the gas, and was just like, here, man, you want to go, you go right on ahead. Jeff, the chat is starting to ask about a crank it up. Should we uh, should we give it to him? Let's give him a crank it up. We'll go to, the, to our leader, Wes Graham, and we'll crank it up here at Bristol. Graham, still your leader right now as he is going to put the 77 truck of Longmire down uh, another lap there. And no, that is his first time. So the 77 is going to be fighting for that position. But man, no one can touch the 88 truck right now. Uh, and we are we're now down to the last quarter of this race. 50 Less than 50 laps left to go. And Wes Graham just has a gigantic lead on everybody else. Nearly a second on Coburn, two seconds on Sahil Mustak. Uh, does anyone have anything to answer to Wes Graham, or is he going to walk away with race number four tonight? Wes Graham is driving this truck so hard, we see nothing but sparks showering on the right side of that truck, and he is he has no problem driving it that close to the wall tonight. Uh, he's just been skimming the wall here and there, here and there. I think that he's starting to uh, lose grip in those tires, uh, and he's having to adjust his uh, entry and his corner entry. Uh, by backing down into the corners, but uh, speed is not a problem for that truck tonight. Let's go on board with him real quick and watch as he navigates these turns. I, I know he is doing everything he can to make sure that he's got enough grip on this truck and you watch him working that wheel going into the turns. He, he's got a, a tiger by the tail here and he is doing everything he can to adjust and make sure that he runs clean and does not get caught up by Jeff Coburn who is slowly starting to stalk him down. Yeah, watching uh, Wes Graham here uh, getting around Bristol is something uh, that it, it, it's it's pretty impressive to watch. Uh, you watch just how close he gets to that to that wall in uh, turns three and four. He's running a little a uh, little bit lower in one and two, 
but he is driving right up next to that wall in three and four. Driving expertly in with this setup, he's gonna he's definitely gonna be the truck to beat tonight as he's now got once again a second over Jeff Coburn, three on Zahil Mustak, and five over Ryan Stewart. Uh, those guys are definitely gonna need a caution at this point if they want to try to catch up and beat the 88. Otherwise, I don't know. Right, uh, speak of the devil, he shall appear. We're gonna find out who's involved with that. Looks like the 77 Longmire's completely stopped up in uh, in turns. Uh, turn one in there, and we're gonna find out uh, what happened here in just a few moments for you folks. Looks like uh, it might have been a self spin. Big smoke coming out of the 77 as you take a look. What happened? He looks like it, it looks like he just overdrove turns three and four. As you see it in the replay there, oh. at coming off the turn, just overdrives it, gets the, the little bit of air taken off. He will go straight nose first into the wall and then gets T boned by Eric O'Neill in the 37. Dad turns to worse for Hondo Longmire, and good news for him, though, is I do believe he's got a couple of quick repairs left. Yeah, I believe so, and we saw that the 37 O'Neill was completely blinked out there, a uh, net coating issue Whoa. Was happening right there. And now the three just rammed into the 29, and the 29 then run into the, uh, into the, or the, um, eight or 71 of John Boris. So chain reaction there. I think the three may have been getting a little bit of a, a payback there. Is he's going to park it now on the Food City logo? He might be done. Yeah, we're going to watch here what happened with the three of Jones. He just pretty much, uh, I, I don't know. I, I think that the field came up on him a lot quicker than he thought it was. He plowed right into 29, 29 to 71. That is not uh, going to... Uh, I, I can guarantee you that that driver is not feeling good about that move. Uh, and that's happened to pretty much all of us on the iRacing service. Uh, if you have never done that before and you have not been iRacing, it's different when you're in a sim racing environment. You know, you've got to say if you're streaming, you got to chat, which you shouldn't be looking at anyway. But we have all these different things in you know at our desk that can be um, nuisances and, 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 get, and can get in the way of things. Like, you know, say you spilled water or something, or hey, you look down at your phone for a second. That's different than what it's like in a real race car. So when we see these kind of mistakes happen, it's easy to put the blame on somebody like that, but it's happened to everybody, essentially. Remember, kids, texting and driving is a bad idea. It can wait. That message brought to you by a nondescript cell phone company who would be glad to take the sponsorship money from. <laughs> and, and I see my dad's in the chat. He says, uh, or a cat. So exactly. You, you have these things that normally wouldn't be in a real race car. So you could have a cat jump on your lap or something. You could get distracted very easily and make mistakes like that. So before we, you know, run the three or, or over uh, the coals, um, I can, I can put my hand up and say, Hey, I've been there and I've done that. I've hit somebody under caution. Uh, it's extremely embarrassing when it happens. Uh, I don't think he meant to do it. No, I don't think he meant to do it at all. I, I, I think you might have been just a uh, distraction. It could be one of a hundred different things. There's no use speculating. Uh, but you did make a very good point. Uh, this racing is very different from uh, any other type of racing because you do have all that stuff around you, and all it takes is one blink. What it takes is uh, you know a distraction, a cell phone ringing, Alexa going off, and next thing you know, uh, you're either into the wall, you're into the driver, or God knows what else happened to you. So, you know. Lots of stuff can happen at 100 miles per hour. All I know is we're going back to green flag racing with at lap 165. Wes Graham will start on the outside. He will hold on. He will hold the lead. But the question is, Jeff, can he make? Can he hold on for the next 30-some uh, laps? We're going to find out here shortly because they are getting ready to go back green flag racing. We did find out that the three truck green indeed flag, had an issue flag. with the network. And he did not see the trucks in front of him until it was too late. So Wes Graham gets the big run. He will continue to lead, but look who's underneath him. Jeff Coburn trying to move, make a move as he hits the wall almost three wide as Sahil Mustak now gets in the mix. Sahil made a huge move on the 91, got all the way to the bottom of the track. He is after the 88 right now, but look, we've got some uh, friends behind the 91. That is the 12 of Stewart. That's the 22 of Reno. That's the 87 of Gray. Everybody fighting to get in a position in case another caution comes out. Are they racing to another yellow flag? I don't think so, but the 91 of Coburn down to the bottom is going to get around the 18. 
Wes Graham keeps hitting the walls in the turns. I know he's driving hard, but that cannot help him as Coburn and company start to make the move toward towards that position number one. Coburn now back in second, Mustak in third, and Ryan Stewart wants to get underneath Mustak and try to get position number three for himself. Yeah, Ryan uh, really showed a lot of speed on that restart, and now he's getting uh, really aggressive with the 18. He's this. If there's any time to do it, it's now. You're running out of time in this race. So uh, it looks like these guys are starting to get a little impatient with each other back here. They've been next to each other all night, and uh, this is exactly what the 88 wants to see. Everybody back there clamoring for those positions. He'll just check out and drive away. Everyone wants to rule the world, but only one man can, can be top of the mountain. And right now, that is Wes Graham. He has got a half a second over Jeff Coburn and company. So I don't know if he, I don't know what he can do. I don't know if anyone can catch up to him. What these guys have got to do behind him is try to run in line, quit fighting in amongst each other, and get a run on that 88. I don't think the, that Graham is as strong as he'd like to be at this juncture in the race. And I think that Jeff Coburn and company could have something for him to try to pick him off at the at the end stages of this race. And right now, for a lot of these guys back here, it's really hard as a driver to be in this position, to be right there in third or fourth. You just start overdriving the truck so much, more than you would realize, uh, because you see these other guys starting to get runs on you, and you're like, what am I doing differently than that guy's doing? And it gets really frustrating here, especially at Bristol, to see that happening. And you're, you're, you're trying to do everything you can. You're overdriving the truck, and you're starting to lose speed off of it. So Wes Graham continues to lead, but his, and his lead looks like it's stabilizing now. Six-tenths of a second that last time by. This time, again, six-tenths of a second. So Coburn and company have their, their, their hands tied. They are, have, they are working it hard as they can. 26 left to go. 25, when we hit the start-finish line, Graham will continue to lead. Is that lead starting to dwindle, though? Yes, it is. That's a round. They picked off two hundredths of a second, and it's only a matter of time now that Coburn uh, can reel them in. But will it be too little too late? Coburn starting to finally run down the 88 of West Graham, but uh, will it be enough time? That is the question. We're going to look from our blimp view up here, and you can see the gap right there between first and second, and he is indeed starting to close that in on West Graham. Wes cannot make mistakes at this point. You got to drive up next to the wall. You got to do what it takes. But I'm starting to notice that the 88 is dropping down a lane because he doesn't want to put that truck into the wall. And the good news for him is there's more infighting back behind him. Jeff Coburn under fire from Sahil Mustak. The more those two trucks fight, the harder it is going to be for them to get around to, to get around and get up to West Graham. Side by side, they continue to run on lap 179. Did someone tell, somebody needs to tell them, hey, time is running out and you guys need to catch up to the leader. It doesn't matter. At this point, those, these guys don't see it that way. They're looking for track position. They're hoping that, hey, I'll, I'll catch West Graham if, the, if a caution comes out. And we see the 91 gets sideways. It gets into the 80, 18. The 12 gets around and he is involved. And there's a cone, the 19 of Barkman's around, and uh, right, caution, caution will fly caution indeed. This changed up everything in the top five. That, I don't have any words for that. That was a hard race between those guys, and I, like I said, a little bit of foolish racing. They need to, at this point, I respect them running for the position. Don't get me wrong. They definitely were racing hard for position number two. But if they had stayed in line, worked together a little bit, they could have caught up to Wes Graham and try to challenge him at the end there. Now Sahil Mustak's going to restart well behind. He's going to have to come down pit road for new, brand new tires on his truck. And a lot of other guys now also going to take the advice and come to their crew. Uh, they look, oh, wow. The, even the leader's coming in. The 88 of Wes Graham will lead them down pit road. Wes Graham going to be bringing it down pit road. We are getting on there now and... Indeed, looks like the 91 is going to take two tires. 91 did take two tires, and the, and Jeff Coburn will be the first down and away off pit road. But is a two-tire stop going to be enough? No, actually, it wasn't any tires. It was just fuel for him. Four tires for Wes Graham, four tires for Alex Reno, four for Charles Gray, Ryan Stewart, who actually, I think he hit his pit box correctly that time. Yes, he did. And that is going to be 
a uh, two-tire stop for Stewart to try to get back on into the group. So lots of strategies at play here. Let's see which one will be the will hold the winning ticket. And we're watching the 29 of Michael Long. He is behind the pace car. He will be uh, getting a wave around off of this, and uh, that will put him back on the lead lap. He'll come down pay road, get his truck fixed. I believe he does have another fast repair available to him tonight. So he could uh, still end up in the top 10. He, he was fast earlier tonight. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how much, uh, you know, track position does uh, matter for the top 10 tonight. But uh, huge, huge gamble by the 91 to not come down pit road. Everybody else did. And he's going to stay out with no tires and only fuel. We'll be back here shortly at Bristol. Welcome back to Bristol. We are seeing some interesting racing tonight. A lot of strategy involved, but a lot of just kind of dumb luck tonight, Joe. We've seen guys uh, making decisions on pit road, but it didn't really matter because the cautions change up pretty much the whole race. Uh, strategy, ideas, everything. Basically, everyone who came down pit road threw out the out the clipboards and said screw it let's figure out how to win this race and jeff coburn had the boldest call of them all he only took fuel and he is back in the lead of this field charles gray who's second in points he's in second sahil mustak ryan stewart will be behind them in row two honda longmire in the mix as well with scott barkman this is gonna be <laughs> for the next a handful of laps. We've got uh, about six, 50, 14 laps left to go. It's going to be every man's race for himself. The green 91 flag, is flag. off. Green flag in the air back at Bristol. And we are seeing the 87 of Gray. But look at the inside of the 87 is 12 of Ryan Stewart. He is coming. And he's coming fast for the 91. Everybody's up front. And the 91 did not get a huge, huge jump on the pack as he intended. He did not as the, sub, as the 21 goes around. 18 made contact with him. Both those trucks will save it, but they are going to lose position. Count them out of the race as it's great news for Jeff Coburn, who's looking for a big win. Huge, huge loss happening back there whenever the 12 and the 18 got sideways. They're able to gather it back up, but now it comes down to the 91 versus the 87. We saw the 87 come down on pit road. He got four fresh tires and it's starting to show. Jeff Coburn continues to be in the lead. If he, if he holds on for the next 11 laps, this would be his first win of the season. But Charles Gray, who's in second in points right now, he definitely wants to make a statement in the Monster Energy Chevrolet. He's going to go way low trying to get around the 91. It almost looks like the 87 got into the 91 a little bit there, but it wasn't. I think he just, uh, that's hard racing. They got a little loose, but the 87 made a huge move in the bottom. And that's not proving a way around the 91 as it stands. So great. Now looking for any line he can get as a 91 of Jeff Coburn doing some rear view mirror driving, trying to hold off an 87 at any opportunity he can. That's great news for Wes Graham, who's now coming up in a hurry. Can he catch him, though, in seven laps? I don't know if seven laps is enough to do it, but right now it almost looks like the 87 has the truck to pass the 91, and he's just toying with them a little bit. He wants him to use up his truck, make a mistake like he just did. The 91's around, and the 87's saying now the 88 gets around him, and the caution flies once again. This isn't over by a long shot. We are probably going to go into overtime as a result of this one. I don't think we're going to get uh, we're, we're going to get a, a restart in six laps here. But what a, a dramatic finish that's going to set up. Charles Gray in the lead. Wes Graham will be on his outside when we restart. John Borst will be up in the mix as well. Alexander Reno and Ryan Stewart have a new lease on life. So he'll move stack as well as they will all be in the first three rows. This is going to get intense. 
it just looked like to me the 91 felt the pressure of the 87 to send him around. He didn't get a whole lot of damage on that truck. Not sure if he's going to bring it down pit road or not, but wow, that's going to change up pretty much this whole race. But what a break for the 87. He's he's shown a lot of promise in this league, and now Gray can actually maybe maybe get a win here tonight. I know he's very frustrated at Pocono. He was very uh, strong at Pocono last week. Um, so it's it's good to see the 87 up here, and now he's leading the race. Uh, Joe, if you're talking, I cannot hear you. Because I had my mic muted. I was <laughs> I, I was all about the promo. I was there, man. You, you missed it. That's all right. <laughs> I appreciate you yelling at me that my mic was muted. Uh, Folks, if you are enjoying what you're watching here tonight with the OCRP iRacing League, be sure to join us again next week as they take on the perfect oval at Homestead Miami Speedway. That's Thursday, August 22nd, 8 p.m. Green Flag here on Twitch.tv slash Faviano. And, of course, as always, the behind-the-scenes cam at Twitch.tv slash The Joe Cortez Show. Yes, the Joe Cortez Show. And, uh, yeah, Homestead's a fun track. It's it, it's interesting about Homestead. When you go to Homestead, you think that it's a bigger track than it actually is. When you see it in real life, in person, it's actually a pretty small track. Um, and it's uh, got a really wide racing surface on it. So uh, we, it's not uncommon to see guys driving uh, four wide there. Not uncommon at all. Chat is all over the predictions right now. Lots of people rooting for uh, for West Graham in the in the uh, eighty eight. We got a couple of people going for uh, for Charles Gray in the eighty seven. This could be his big shot at winning it all. Uh, seventy one eighty seven also making some predictions as well. The seventy one of of course uh, John Boris, who has been heartbroken these last few weeks. So uh, a lot of predictions, Jeff. Who do you got on this restart when we go back to Green Flag Racing? My money tonight is on the eighty seven of Gray. He's been patient. This guy almost wanted a Pocono. It just snuck away from him. The 88 can get it done here, but, man, no one wants to win more than the 87 truck right now. But look at John Bors in third. That is going to be a huge upset, especially since he came down pit road and got that truck all ready to go. Lights are off on the first racing Ford Mustang pace car. Let's take it through what the restart rule will be one more time. This will be a one-lap dash for the cash unless a caution flag comes out before they take the checkered flag. Charles Gray, Wes Graham, front row. John Boris, Alex Reno, row two. Ryan Stewart, Scott Barkman, row three. Sahil Mostak, Jeff Coburn, row four. And the last one on the lead lap is Michael Long. Jeff, one lap to win it. Charles Gray in command. Let's take them around one last time at Bristol Motor Speedway. Let's see what uh, Gray's going to do here. He is the control truck. He can go at any time he wants. He can play a little bit of games, and he is holding them off, and there he goes. He is out there like a shot out of a cannon. The 87 of Gray is on his way to the lead, and the 88 truck is falling right behind him. The 71 did not have enough to get going there, and now he's battling the 22. It will be extended for a green white checkered finish, so they will have one more to go. And here comes Wes. Here comes uh, Wes Graham. He's going side by side as a 22 22's spins around. Out. Big jump. The 12 into the wall. No, no caution, caution. No caution. We're no still caution. Racing. Still racing. And the 87's in the wall. A little bit of contact by the 88s. <laughs> wow. And that is going to bring it out. That is it. Charles Gray. Charles Gray gets it done at Bristol, baby. That's how you do it. As the fireworks go off, first win for Charles Gray in the OCRP iRacing League. The Monster Energy Chevrolet getting it done tonight. And as I look back at that replay, I think there's a little bit of confusion after Alex Reno went down. You saw everyone starting to check up a little bit, starting to uh, starting to, to slow down. And then all of a sudden, hey, there's no flags coming out. We still got racing to do. Yeah, no. no I think everybody thought the caution was going to come out there, but not in the front there and the 87 did everything he could he got in the wall but he blocked the 88 and he got it done here at bristol that's all that matters the 87 going to be celebrating here on the start finish line right now charles gray your winner here at bristol and charles gray having a great season so far two top fives sit four top tens 
does not chalk one up in the win column until tonight. Charles Gray, your winner here at Bristol Motor Speedway, burning it down. And it looks like Gray still plays at least at Bristol, baby. <laughs> Gray uh, got it done. I know he was very, very disappointed last week. In fact, we're going to do what we normally don't do, and we're going to pop into the driver's meeting. We're going to talk to him a little bit. Lee's going to put the truck up next to the wall and give us a nice burnout. Ooh, a little bit of uh, back and forth action there. there. A little pinball, uh, giving the fans a nice uh, burnout at the start-finish line. This means a lot to that 87 team. Oh, absolutely it does. The, you're going to hear a very happy driver when we talk to him after the race tonight. What, what an incredible finish. What a run for Charles Gray. Eight laps led, but guess what? He led the eight most important laps of the evening. He did indeed, and we're going to try to get involved and listen in on that driver's meeting here shortly, if we can. Just waiting here. I can't move my uh, I can't move my discord <laughs> that's good let me just do that there we go I got I, the, old, the old windows trick always does it all right let's go to race control and listen in man hell of a race tonight that was that went a lot cleaner than I was expecting y'all y'all boys put on a hell of a show man Charles Gray in the 87 gets it done here tonight at Bristol. Charles, how do you feel about that after what uh, was a, a loss for you at Pocono? Uh, that uh, that feels great to have a comeback race like that. Pocono was tough, but uh, we practiced uh, a lot here at Bristol. Had some some rough rough goes of it early. Got into some cautions and things like that, but uh, the team pulled it together. Got to thank Monster, Chevy, and uh, OCRP for putting this on, guys. This is a lot of fun. This is actually my first race ever, in, or first win, excuse me, ever in iRacing. So it's uh, really special to be able to share it with you. Well, congratulations to that. I know what that feels like. Everybody knows what that first win feels like. But uh, let's talk to uh, Borst. John, what did you? Uh, what were you feeling about uh, your truck there? You, you had a little bit of, uh, of of luck in the beginning. Well, not so much luck, but uh, you had skill in the beginning. But uh, what happened there in the middle of the race? I net coded off of Alex. Um, it is what it is when you race that close on the internet. But it was a fun race overall. I'm glad for Chuck. He he put in a lot of practice this week, and he deserved a win. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. I'm sure everybody uh, that is watching live right now appreciates your words. Big, big congratulations in order for Charles Gray. And uh, we're going to let you guys get your uh, get your driver's meeting going, and then we'll talk to you afterwards. All right, guys. Well, that is going to do it for us here tonight at Bristol. Mr. Cortez, always a pleasure. We'll see you next week at Homestead. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to tonight's race. I do want to get caught up on a lot of people uh, that I missed during the broadcast, and this will be the time that I'll take to check that out. Toad's Gold 8377. Thank you for your bit. Do appreciate that, man. All the cheers tonight. Chris824, thank you for your cheers as well. And uh, CBJ72 hosted uh, the stream tonight. Thank you so much. And uh, Barnboski, thank you for gifting out subscriptions tonight. Swatson 2012, Loopy Chipmunk, and Storm 00, Aaron 1995, Dennis Magoon. Welcome to the stream family, everybody. Do appreciate that. JRR 1869, resubscribe for seven months in a row. Thank you so much for that, man. I do appreciate that time and time and time again that we do see it. Wow. Scout Life, massive cheer tonight. 
catching another live stream. Love the vids. Keep it up, bro. Show love all the way down the board. We appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. I'm Joe Blanco. Thank you for two months in a row. Uh, Vortex1G, thank you for your subscription. Apex RPs, thank you for your subscription. Welcome to the stream, family, folks. Uh, Red Devil 14 s thank you for the bits, man. Uh, not a problem at all. Thank you very much. We had some more hosts that came in after uh, that, but I'm looking for the subscribers here the, as quick as I can. Smoking the Man, thank you for those bits, man. Goldfish Man, thank you for your subscription. Welcome to the stream, family. Logan B921, Security Guy 7588, Alt, Alt, Alt Artvark 1779, Delton Rushing, Wranglers 97, Tomboy 51, Soccer Dude, The Barefoot 352. Thank you guys for those subscriptions. Welcome to the stream family. School Bus 17, thank you for your donation. Man, thank you very much. You guys are awesome as always. Do appreciate the love and support you show here on the Twitch streams. We were able to get the uh, the Twitch thing figured out. It seems to be a problem with the rebrand uh, animations causing massive lag in OBS. You guys are awesome. You tune in every single week for these races. Really appreciate that, guys. Real debug. Thank you for your subscription. That's going to do it for us at Bristol tonight. We'll see you next time. Take care.